So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are in our episode number two, uh, hitting your goals in 2021. And we clearly think we're very clever on the whole hitting your goals, but we got to set the goals first. So why don't you yes. give them a little taste of what we're talking about today? Yeah, so we're uh, we're going to try and break down actually what goals are. I, I think and th this time of year, so we're going to be January the 1st, New Year's resolutions. And sometimes we've got like good intentions to make changes, but we don't actually put anything in a structured manner, whether that be for our golf or whether that be for our life, to actually have something down that we can actually use as a, a catalyst to really push and make, make the changes that we want to change. Um, we can sometimes use motivation, but motivation dies pretty quickly. So we, we want to have our goals in a set way. Let's, uh, let's go to slide number two and we'll, we'll let the lovely audience know. So how we're before gonna we go this. to slide two, I just want to introduce my partner in crime here, Steve Buzza. He is also my husband and I, will, I like to brag a little about him because you have some specialties that I think are really important. So one being that, you know, he, he's the body guy. He understands how the body works, uh, how you can prevent injury and also how you can come back from some injuries. So I think that's important for everyone to know. Do you want to introduce me now? <laughs> Hubs? So this, is, this is Megan. Megan is my wife. <laughs> but uh, Megan is a, a top 50 teacher and, and you're you're unique in the sense you specialize in juniors yep. and you specialize in putting. So two very different elements, but um, very, very, very good, good at it. So all right, here we go. So we did do a little itinerary for our session today. We're going to keep this one short. About 30 minutes is our goal. It's <laughs> but the obviously call. it's open for question and answer. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time watching it. But Here's a, kind of our little itinerary of what you have in store for today. But I'm gonna lead us off with the three Ds to action on how you're going to get better results on the goals that you're setting for 2021. Uh, first and foremost is you have to decide what it is that you want. How are you gonna get those goals if you don't really know what those goals are that you're trying to get? So I want you to be fully committed on, on what you're trying to achieve so that you can just be able to go after them. Full commitment, it's key for golf, and it's also going to be a key for your success and your goals. Number two is I think it's very important to declare what those goals are. So if you know what you want and you want to go after it, you need to be able to shout it out at the rooftops because it's important that you believe enough about your goals that you're not afraid to tell other people about it. Um, I think if you are afraid to say it out loud, then you're probably going to be not so likely to accomplish those goals. You, you, you send the wrong message to yourself as well, don't you? If, you, if you're not prepared to say it, you, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're telling your brain, well, I'm not prepared to say it because it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So I, I think that one is something that a lot of people don't consider. And it's arguably the most important one when you are looking at setting goals. Yeah. And, and it just, it's part of that deep belief that you can do something. You, you have to just fully decide and be committed to it. So I always talk about it in terms of golf. There's always that decision line behind the ball where until you feel a hundred percent, like, or you can even fake it if you need to, but be committed to what you're trying to do before you cross that line. And the last D to get the action that you need to accomplish your goals is just go and do it. Go and do it. Put it in your schedule, plan it out, and make it that important. If it's a priority, it will be in your schedule, and you'll be able to focus on it. So the three Ds, decide what it is you want, declare it to the world, have some accountability, find accountability partners, and then the third is just go and do it. All right. Awesome. So I, how do we work smarter and not harder, Steve? So we are going to try and work smart. So smart is a it's a concept that is used in golf, it's used in sport, it's used in business. Uh, it's very simple, but sometimes the simple things are the things that actually can really give us the structure to do well. So smart stands for 
S, your goal has to be specific. And what I what I find is if it's not specific, you might have got good intentions, but it will be more of a value than it will be a goal. So it might be something like this is what I want to be as a person, mm -hmm. but without it being specific, it's not actionable. It needs to be simple as well. Oh, it's simple. So that, that's the S for me. So specific and, and simple. Um, we don't need a really crazy, complex goal. Go, what am I trying to do? Let's try and get the cause and effect here. What am I trying to do? But the M it has to be measurable. Mm -hmm. And again, can you see if it's not specific, it can't be measured. And having it measured, and uh, I, I like to use the 90% rule. So you kind of set, and uh, I'm going to use weight as an example. Let's say you're trying to lose weight. You might go, my target weight is this. Once I get within 90% of it, I actually celebrate as if I have achieved my goal and set a new goal. I love that rule. So can you say, that's, and, and, that's a good one. and that can be for golf in particular, it's like, let's say you go, well, I want to shoot a score or I want to do this. And you actually start practicing better. You start taking some instruction you start being more engaged with what you're trying to achieve. And you might find that goal is actually felt like you couldn't get anywhere near a couple of weeks. You've already got there um, by using that 90% rule you don't then lose that momentum. You know, the good stuff, it's sometimes, and this is what we see with weight. When you start getting to your target weight, you start to ease off. You start to realize actually this goal is attainable. Yeah. And then you either achieve it, but you could have actually done better. Or what we see a lot of the time, it's we start to actually dip and start to miss our goal. Yeah, because it's like that last, you know, five pounds or whatever you're trying to lose it with the weight loss example is, is always the hardest it seems, but mm -hmm. if it's the new goal of the next 10% that or the new goal that you've set, then it's very achievable. Yeah, we move the finish line a bit and then you go, well, I need to keep going. Yeah, I love that. Try that everyone, yeah. listen, I, listen to that. I, I, was, I, was, uh, <laughs> I was speaking to a friend who was in the military and he, he, he used the, I'm 40% there. I'm always 40% there. So he said, I've always got a little more to give. So I don't go, I'm right at the end. And I've just, got, he's, he's only ever 40% there. Yeah, that's a good. So he, he goes, I've got, yeah. I've got three things to do and I'm too tired. Well, I'm only 40% there. So I'll get that done. I'm only, it, it just allows you to keep going and going and going. Um, we then go, has to be achievable. And that's why sometimes it's really important what you were saying about how you have to tell people about your goal. So you can actually start putting a structure in that you're like, look, actually, this is what I can do. We're, we're very lucky in the modern world that we can usually find somebody that has already done it. Somebody that is our same age, the same background that we've got. So you go, look, I want to find what, what can I achieve? And then that can actually drive us towards that point. And then I also like to speak about it as if it's now been done. So let and I you you might if you've had lessons with me before if let's let's say someone says oh I'm a slicer, or and I want to be a fader, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna say look you are a as a fader of the golf ball. This is what you do, rather than saying when you learn how to fade it. And again, that goes with we're almost looking ahead because the most of the time with goals, if it's attainable, we will achieve it if we stick to our process. So I, I like to go, look, we speak as if it has already been achieved. Um, as human beings, we don't like doing that because sometimes it makes us feel like we're being a bit like too cocky, a bit big, big headed. So you sometimes going back to what you said about telling people probably don't have to tell everybody, <laughs> you know, it's telling somebody that you trust somebody that will keep you accountable. Yeah, definitely. If you, if you are shooting a hundred and you've decided you want to shoot 80, probably wouldn't be telling my three people I'm playing with or the people I've never even met, probably not telling them that on the first tee. And it's finding somebody that, <laughs> that will keep you accountable. So when you look, you said you were gonna shoot 80, you're shooting 100, I haven't seen you practice for three months. You know, you want, you want that special person rather than just, look, I'm, gonna, I'm shooting 80 now. People will go, <laughs> you're not. So going with achievable, it's gotta be realistic. 
you see, and that those two, and I, we've, I've kind of just explained that one quite a lot. You know, it's, it's, it's got to be realistic. So, and what I see a lot with out, like trying to hit goals, sometimes people pick a goal that's not really sentimental to them. It's not really personal to them. They pick it because they feel, oh, it would be nice if I had that. You know, so being realistic, actually, sometimes it's picking one that really suits where you want to be. It suits your values. So if we go back into golf, I want you to pick one that resonates and is actually going to make you enjoy your golf more. So you might enjoy more if you simply win more. You see that so that goal will align. If you actually want to feel like I'm in more control, you know, I want to hit the ball better using a goal of, well, I just want to win. You see, that's not really going to resonate. So realistic, sometimes it feels like it's almost putting a bit of a ceiling on like what you can achieve. And I actually think realistic is, is more about finding a goal that really you can feel like that's my goal. It's, it's personal to me. Yeah. And I think, I mean, these are so important just in, in every day. Um, it's so important because when you go out and play golf, you're setting these mini goals every time you go out there. And so, you know, I had a student that I just recently worked with that when we went out there, she was doing awesome. I mean, as far as playing, but then it was like, well, I'm really not hitting it very solidly. And so I said, well, you know, when the tournament, a professional player goes and wins the tournament, they really only hit like one or two shots that they think are great. They'll even say in the interview, afterwards you know I really only hit like one good shot this whole weekend and they they still won the tournament so sometimes it's just saying you know where where are you realistically you're not going to hit every shot great it's just how you're reacting to it so I I, I really like that the realistic yeah. part of that yeah and then it needs to be timed has to be timed and that's something um, I, I'll give you a give an example my my master's that I finished my so I had my research thesis to do one of the things and I, it ended up taking probably a bit longer than it should have is I wasn't structured enough in my short-term goals and and the timings so I, I was very clear on the other stuff you know it was, meant a lot to me but because I wasn't structured enough in the timings um, things would drift you know when when something hard would come up you know I I would at one point I was designing a bit of computer software to actually like churn out the data hmm. and it's hard and my mass ain't that good <laughs> so i would go look i would stop okay. if it was timed it said look you have to have this done by then i'd have probably asked for help I, I had enough mentors and stuff i would have probably helped hmm. so because you knew you had that deadline absolutely and, yeah i mean i know that i i definitely have some attention like my attention can can scatter but when I have when it has to be done that next day it yeah. I I can always just the the answers come right about it. for sure and and it can sometimes come depends like your personality so like if you're a, a perceiver you're going to love to explore you're gonna you're gonna be easily distracted so you need to set up your goals in a way that actually keeps you interested but if it's so structured you'll actually not enjoy it either so you see it and yeah. a perceiver might drift a bit, but they actually love the pressure of a deadline. Yeah. So sometimes we go, well, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself where it's some people's personalities, it's that pressure that actually drives you to achieve your best. So what are the rules of the game that people need to know about? So the rules of the game, and I, I think when it comes to goals, this is one of the biggest influences that I had when I had my college team. Um, I was lucky. I, I had a mentor called Mark Bennett. Mark Bennett, MBE. So he, if you've got an MBE in England, it means you've done some very special stuff. <laughs> and he, he used to work above basically any sport in England. He had worked with coaches within that discipline, but he, he, he would work above the coaches. So he would, wouldn't interact with the players. So every Olympic team, he did a lot of rugby, a lot of uh, soccer, and I was fortunate that he was working with a high performance team. And, and something when it comes to the rules of the game is first things first, you have to set the rules. If somebody else sets the rules, so let, let's say you're having lessons and your coach says, look, if you want to hit your goal, 
these are the rules. Yeah, that, you'll hear that a lot from people just yeah. wanting to, I can see how people have run into that, but what do you? So you, you have to agree them together. So you say, look, if my goal is to shoot 80 or break 80, how do I have to behave? What, how many times a, a week am I going to need to practice? And we might say, look, you need to practice three times a week. If you don't practice three times a week, you're not going to hit that goal. So it's now set in stone before we get into the process. If you don't set them in stone, we drift and we keep changing them. And through my experience, people tend to be far too um, negative with how they're achieving their goals rather than actually changing the rules to make it easier. So people don't tend to take their, like, like, let's say, this is my goal, I wanna break 80. People don't go, look, oh, 85 is good enough for me. It's not what usually happens. They'd, they'd go, look, I, I'm not practicing enough. I need to practice seven times a week. And you see, then they get tired. Yeah, so you go, look, three to yeah, so you go three times a week is acceptable. Two times a week isn't. And then going back to what you said about actually then having somebody that you've told about your goals, and that could be your coach. It just could be somebody that you trust. You then have them keep you accountable to it. Mm -hmm. Back so, to the accountability. So again. it's accountability. Just you know, really checking in on where where you are with those goals. Yeah. And and we would um, th this one's a really silly one, but I think it highlights how you have to do things uh, prior to actually getting into trying to achieve your goals. Is when I had my college team. We set a role, a rule as a team that you had to wear your uniform. You know, we had nice mm -hmm. stuff, we had all the logos, and we did most of our practice off campus. So it's like showing people that we're we're a very professional side. You know, we're UK number one, so you're gonna wear your stuff. Uh, my first year before a big event, a few of them turned up and without their stuff on. And I go, Oh, look, I'll give them uh, it's okay. This time I'll let you off this time. You see, it's not a rule anymore. Hmm. So it's once you've set the rule. So the following year, I was like, the rule is the rule. And you have to go, it's either acceptable or unacceptable. Am I saying we, we, you can't slip up? Of course you can slip up. But at least you know, look, this is, this is the path. You, you will identify quicker when you're coming off the path. And you'll actually realize if you're sticking to them, and you know how progress is, it's, it's up and down, it's left and right, it hides under the table, then it's yeah. up, up <laughs> on the roof. So it keeps you on that path, but then you actually get to your goals. So it, it sounds like that structure is almost a bit like, like if you asked your coach, you'd be like, we think of you as a naughty kid and we're telling you off and it, it's, it's far from that. It's just having that accountability mm -hmm. And that understanding with you and your coach as well, or, or your really your accountability partner. So next, uh, we're going to get to some question and answers. But first, we have a couple questions for you. I'm going to send out a poll right now. So it's going to ask you a couple of questions here. One being, do you like to set goals for the new year? So you know, pretty soon here, we're going to be celebrating our, oh, thank goodness, 2021 is going to be here, everyone. Oh, my gosh. So do you typically set goals in the new year on things that you'd like to take on? New year, new you, is that how you're doing it? And then the second question here is how long do you tend to keep those New Year's resolutions going? Do you typically stick with it for about a month? Do you go really kind of for that first half of the year? Or do you, are you one of those people that can just really drive through the whole year with the goals that you have set? So if, if you're tuning in to the recorded version of this, answer this kind of in your own mind and, uh, and we'll check in with it uh, when we talk to you about what you thought of our video. So here's the poll results here. I'm gonna share it with everyone. All right, so it looks like we had uh, 100% set goals. I know I'm going to be sending some goals for this new year. And, uh, and it looks like here that most people stick with it. And, uh, and, you know, I would say like about half the year is getting 
about done in this mm -hmm. in this selection of the group we're looking at here. So awesome. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, ooh, I, uh, here's the first question coming to us is, what are your goals for 2021? Go, Megan, you kick us off. All right. So I, I have mine in a lot of different areas. So thank you for asking that question because I, I do want to declare it and I'm so excited to be able to just really put my focus and, and put, you know, put this, I want to show everyone the example of, of what I'm going to do with my goals. So uh, I have health goals. So definitely, you know, living a healthier lifestyle, uh, just, you know, taking care of my myself so that I have the most energy and can perform at uh, peak performance. But in a big area where I'm going to attack that is I'm a, a big believer in having an effective morning routine. If you can win your morning, then you can win your day. So uh, I find that when I get up and at it early 5 a.m. and have a purposeful morning ahead of myself, that it actually sets me up for a better day. So that that's one example of an area that I target. I call it a process goal where if you want a big goal. So if I, if I want like to achieve something amazing, I need to start with a process goal that I can focus on every single day or in golf, I would focus on every single shot that I hit. So a, fo a process goal I would have in golf would be maybe every shot I hit today, I'm going to hold my finish until the ball lands on the ground. Does that mean I'm going to hit every shot? Well, no, but it means that it's something I can, can really focus on a small process that if I do it every day, it will achieve something great. So one of my process goals, and I just read a great comment there by one of our participants, but um, one of my great process goals is, uh, <laughs> and I'll tell everyone what it was in a second, but is, uh, is going to be, uh, oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> sorry, I love you. The person that commented that is, um, is there gonna be a little Steve? Uh, are we going to have a child? Maybe, we will see. <laughs> we'll keep everybody posted on that. <laughs> but you see how easily I get distracted. <laughs> um, my process goal for achieving my 2021. Well played, Mike, well played. <laughs> is, um, is that if I can wake up every morning and, and do my morning routine, it sets me up for success. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I, no, but I, I, I really like that one. Um, we didn't really speak about that in the other ones. And I kept using the example of weight and I kept using the example of scoring in golf um, because they're outcome orientated. Sometimes we can get lost in it and you, you are making improvements and don't realize you're doing it with a process goal. It's easier to keep track of, you know, usually like your one, you either got up or you didn't. Yeah. You'll feel like you're exactly the same person, but then you don't really. And it's interesting how it happens after a few weeks, a few months, people say, oh, you seem to be so much more proactive. You seem to be doing this. You're doing that. Your golf, you go, oh, I feel like I'm doing exactly the same. I d can't work out why my scores are coming down a little bit at a time. People will start noticing it before you notice because this is breaking news. We spend a lot of time with ourselves. So it's hard sometimes to see those little changes. Process changes, love it. Uh, my goals, I I am looking to go to US Open qualifying next year, assuming it goes ahead. Yeah. Was that a hint that I, I keep I, leaving like, the screen? Gotta get in the screen. Gotta get in the there screen. There you are. Uh, but yeah, so, and I, I totally agree with that, but what would be some areas like with the injuries and such that you would maybe just need to be careful or, or we, we had a really good other question it was like do you like long-term goals or short-term goals so my long-term goal or my big goal is to go to us open qualifying uh currently my body can't handle the practice that will be required so there's there's health goals in there but everything's leading into playing more mm -hmm. and it's uh that's not feeling sorry for me i've been I've been enjoying Christmas. I've been enjoying the holidays. <laughs> I've been enjoying forgetting about 2020. As everyone can see, we're very well fed in this household. <laughs> oh, you, didn't have to, you, didn't have, you, you didn't have to tell everybody. 
Yeah. So my 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 big one, and and I, it was my intention to do it last year. Um, I didn't tell anybody. I subsequently didn't do anything about it. I didn't practice, and I, and all of a sudden it it hit a point. So again, if I want to go qualifying and. What I, what I like about US Open qualifying and the USGA is if you miss the qualifying score by a certain amount, they actually ban you. Uh, the RNA don't do that. So I've been to uh, British Open qualifying before and you either qualify or you go home and you can come back the next year. Uh, the USGA don't work like that. So I have to start now. I have to, I have to get my body. I, got a, I broke my foot a few years ago. It feels like I've got a broken foot and a broken right wrist. So I need to get that checked out and get that sorted. And then, yeah, that is the goal. And if I don't do the practice, that's a, that's a goal that will go horribly wrong. But uh, that's, what, that's kind of why I'm excited about it. Awesome. Uh, so there's some great comments there in the chat. If anyone has any questions before we wrap it up here, feel free to write those in. But, uh, you know, I, I actually do have a question for Steve. Um, when you were talking about the smarter goals, yep. one was the being able to measure it. Okay, so you're a really, um, you're really hard on yourself. So like, how do you find these? Uh, do, you, do you ever find someone having trouble uh, measuring what's fair because maybe they set that standard so high? Is that? Yeah, and that's, that's really why you have to set it out before you start. Um, I, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. I used to do performance analysis at college and um, the, the lead lecturer actually worked with England rugby when they won the world cup and the head coach wanted them to have a hundred percent pass perfect pass ratio. And they, they were calling a perfect pass, like not something that someone had to grab for actually in a zone that they should be. And the performance analysis team went and did some research. They were checking the All Blacks, which were the world champions at the time, and they only had a 90% ratio. So sometimes um, using objective numbers is great, but you need somebody to tell you like, look, this is what good is, this is what bad is. Uh, putting is the simplest one. Um, what's it, 50% from eight feet? Yeah, tour players are making 50% of their putts from eight feet. and. Yeah. Everyone that we teach thinks that they need to make a hundred percent. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no, but you do. When when I a, yeah, it can be a tricky. No, but it, you said that jokingly. But when I when I work with the nine hole uh, ladies, when I used to ask them, and I've, I've asked them a few times now, so they're starting to understand. But they look at it; they think a tall pro would hold it a hundred percent of the time. And can you see how that takes you away from that? That's not attainable. The reason the tour pros miss, by the way, it's not that they only hit 50% of their putts well, it's there's lots of stuff outside of their control. Mm -hmm. You want your goals to be in your control. Again, that's why I, I much prefer the process goals. I think um, when it comes to golf in particular, it, it's knowing what you want to achieve, but having a process goal, um, with to answer your question directly about um, you can be hard on yourself, um, getting through a whole round and trying to smile the whole round. Yeah, that's hard to do. It can be hard to do, but it's you've, a good process goal. It's a, it's a great yeah. process goal. And the thing is with something like that, it sounds like, yeah, but that's just stupid. You hit it in this, you want to be looking in the marsh with the smile on your face, <laughs> but it actually, it sends signals to your brain that you're doing okay. So your performance actually improves as a result. All right, so that's our challenge. Next time you go play, <laughs> can you keep a smile on your face after every shot? Or another one could just be, can you keep your eyes above the horizon? Because notice how many times in a round people will drop their head out of shame, oh, yeah. where it's just a good process to stick with, um, just to try to keep your eyes above the horizon. So all the information for our Buzz About Golf uh, pod, or podcast uh, episodes that we're doing, our little Zoom clinics that we're doing are going to be on uh, buzzaboutgolf.com. Hopefully everyone didn't have too many issues accessing the, re the video today. Um, we're going to work out all those little details. Um, but yeah, go ahead and 
Yeah. So goals, really make sure you're clear on what you're trying to do. You have you have to get that first one. Like I, I kind of gave some structure in how to do it. But I, I think the the three D's that you were talking about, actually setting it, going, look, this is what I want to achieve. Behave as if you've achieved it. You know, that smiling example, the keeping your eyes, of, it starts telling your body that actually I've already achieved this. Uh, our, our brain, when it comes to storing memories, uh, we don't have two different filing cabinets for things that we have done and for things that we actually thought about. It all goes into one massive filing cabinet. Um, if you've been telling yourself you can't do it, you're, you start creating uh, visualizations of you not achieving it your body stores that as if it's already happened. Yeah, it's the it's kind of like when you imagine eating a lemon, how you kind of like yes. tense up a little bit, like you're tasting yeah. the lemon. It, it really, your brain really doesn't know the difference. Yeah, it does. And it's, it, again, it sounds almost too simple, but it is is the way to go. If, if you've got a good attitude and you've got it set down, you know, what what is the goal? how do I achieve it? What behavior is going to allow me to do it? What behavior is going to stop me? Even having that simple blueprint, you'd be surprised at what you can achieve in 2021. So thank you so much, everyone, especially, you know, the people that joined us live, we really appreciate your participation. We're going to be, you know, developing this uh, over many sessions here. Our next one is going to be in two weeks. Uh, on the 13th at the same time at 7 p.m. But all those, just maintain those updates on buzzaboutgolf.com. It's where you can find out what all this buzz is about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. We really appreciate you. What, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let's make 2021 full of possibilities. <laughs>